If there were a major catastrophe that hit your area, would you be able to handle the ensuing stress and physical demands? What can you begin to practically do now to prepare yourself physically should such an event occur? In this video, we'll cover the topic of physical fitness and prepping to provide you with information to ensure you'll be physically ready to endure a crisis. You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comments section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. A common request I get in the comments sections of my videos has to do with physical fitness and prepping. Just the other day, VG Rivals asked, can you make a video on prepping health and exercise? Thanks for bringing this up, VG Rivals. It's a very important thing to consider, and again, I believe it's one of those discussions in the prepping community that has not been discussed enough. I've lost track of how many prepper videos that put a focus on gear and gadgets, yet so little emphasis is given to taking care of your number one prep, yourself. If there was a catastrophe that hit your area and you were hit with stress or required to physically work hard to take care of you or your family, it will be too late at this point to get yourself prepared and you may find yourself becoming a liability. In this video, we'll discuss the following points. How to do an assessment of whether you could physically weather a crisis, what physical demands you can expect in a crisis, how to determine your goals, the basics of proper nutrition, exercise, and rest, and my own personal journey over the next 12 weeks. To begin with, let's do an honest evaluation of ourselves. In this day and age, it's easy to compare ourselves to others and say, hey, that person is more of a weight than I am, or use some other measurement to make ourselves feel better. But the reality is that two out of three Americans are obese, which is a staggering number. The line for determining what is in shape has changed drastically recently in the United States. And here's a few simple things you can do now to begin to figure out where you stand. Before I lose anyone jumping into a quick run through discussing body mass index, please note that the following discussion is a starting point to hopefully open your eyes to where you stand in regards to weight, which while is not the most important indicator of your overall well-being, it's an important starting point nonetheless. So let's discuss BMI. You can find your BMI or body mass index within a relative degree of accuracy by using a body fat caliber measurement tool and a body tape measure. These are relatively cheap and you can pick them both up online for about 12 bucks. And once you determine your BMI, there's plenty of information out there like this graph that will show you what your range should be. Now, this is an excellent place to start to determine what your BMI should be. If you don't have the tools I mentioned, you can use a website like this one that will at least give you an idea of what your weight should be for your height. Now, this doesn't account for things like carrying extra muscle, which is beyond the range of the discussion of this video, but it will give you a starting point nonetheless. So now that you've covered discussing how to determine your BMI, let's talk about some practical things now that you can do to begin to evaluate your overall well-being and physical fitness. Again, there's so many things that could also be talked about uh, apart from these points that we're going to discuss, but these are some common ones. How long does it take for you to run a mile? Or even more importantly, could you even run a mile? How far can you hike with your bug out bag? If you're not physically able to carry far, you need to ask yourself some hard questions. The reality is that most of us live a sedentary lifestyle not involving a lot of movement. The average American sits about 10 hours a day. This includes time at work, commuting, and relaxing from the TV in the evening. I could go into a long discussion of the dangers of sitting and what studies are showing, but I'll let you research that yourself. Spoiler alert, it's not good. Now, if there's a crisis, physical labor will be the norm and many people will simply die because their bodies will not be able to handle the physical stress. Many people think they'll go from a sedentary lifestyle to suddenly being able to perform a lot of physical work. While I'm not saying this is impossible, you definitely put yourself at a much higher risk by living this type of sedentary lifestyle. Trust me when I say I understand the challenges of working a day job, sitting behind a desk all day, and the challenges that are involved with getting up and moving. Again. I'm going to share a lot of personal information, some of the challenges I faced, and some of the things I've done to overcome these challenges. And before we move on to the next topic, let me address a comment I hear way too often in the comments section of my videos. I hear things like, hey, being obese is good because you will be able to endure the lack of food much longer than a skinny person. Uh, you know, there's so many problems with this argument, but I'll quickly point out two things. Number one, the biggest problem is that you run a much higher risk with health problems like diabetes, arthritis, and heart-related issues. As preppers, it's easy to get myopic and focus on some catastrophe we think is right around the corner and not think about our long-term well-being. Carrying extra weight for years will lead you to an early death, and at best, it will leave you with many medical problems you'll have to pay a lot of money to deal with later. And secondly, if you think you can just live off your body fat, well, 
That's called starvation. Have you ever been around anyone that is fasting or not eating for an extended period of time for whatever reason? These people are often miserable and really have little to no energy. Remember, your life and the lives of those around you may depend on you being in good shape to perform if a catastrophe happens. If you have health conditions that are due to neglect or simply overweight or out of shape, you will be ineffective and a dead weight when a catastrophe happens. No amount of gadgets, gears, or skills will help you if you are out of shape or your body is ineffective due to neglect. So what can you expect in a crisis? To start with, I expect a lot of stress. Many people will simply die when the reality hits that things are going to be radically different and the world as they know is gone. There's a lot of different types of stresses you'll undergo in a crisis moment like this, but suffice it to say, the pressure will be great. Also, there'll be a lot of physical activity. The days of convenience will be gone, having machinery and other equipment doing the heavy lifting and work for you. Things you'll probably end up having to do uh, are things like chopping, carrying and moving wood, carrying a bug out bag if you have to move, walking long distances, carrying buckets of water long distances. Uh, the list could go on and on. In the days of driving your car everywhere and having all the luxuries and modern conveniences will be gone for however long it will take until things return to normal. And simply transitioning from a sedentary lifestyle to a very active lifestyle won't happen overnight. So let's talk about the first steps in getting fit. What are your goals? Hopefully by now you're sold on getting in physical condition to weather catastrophe, but getting in shape will mean different things for different people. Not everything is about being overweight, but if you live in the United States, you run about a 66% chance you are overweight. Maybe you're not overweight, but rather you just don't have endurance. Or maybe you have endurance, but you have no strength. So the first thing you need to do is determine what is your goal. So here are some typical goals you may want to set. Weight loss, and again, this is my personal goal, which I'll talk about a little more at the end of the video. Uh, endurance. Most survival educators recommend that a bug out bag be no more than about 30 pounds. The next time you're at the grocery store, you should stop by the dog food aisle and pick up a 20 or 30 pound bag and carry it up and down the aisle. Or try walking up several flights of stairs the next time you're at work. If you're winning quickly, you may have to work on your endurance. Strength. This one is different for different people. Some people are naturally strong while others can gain strength through simple weightlifting or resistance training, something we'll discuss on the next point and being mobile. As discussed earlier, the average American sits for about 10 hours a day. You really want to avoid a sedentary lifestyle at all costs. Getting active and incorporating aerobic activities is critical. So now that you've figured out your goals, we'll discuss the basics of proper nutrition and exercise, which will cover the typical goals we mentioned above. I'm not quite so sure why this has become so confusing, but I'll let you in on the secret of physical fitness. Eat proper nutrition and exercise and you'll be healthy and lose body fat. Is your mind blown? Why is there so much confusion on this issue? Well, physical fitness is a $60 billion plus industry. When checking out the grocery store, you'll see the magazines on the rack in the checkout line that guarantees some secret found within the pages that will help ensure you'll lose 30 pounds in one month. There's diet pill commercials, body sculpting surgeries, and so many other things being marketed to you that promise you'll be a better and stronger you if you just buy their product or supplement. Everyone is trying to sell you a product. While this video is not primarily about weight loss, as there's many elements to being fit, it's the first issue many have to face when beginning their journey of getting physically fit. As such, we'll discuss two elements that are critical for weight loss and play a very important role as well in regards to the other goals we discussed earlier. Here's the two key ingredients you need to observe. The first is nutrition or your diet. And I don't mean diet as going on some weight loss fad or you know some new plan, but rather the discussion of what you eat. Most books I've studied over the years put nutrition as about 75% of weight loss. It's important that you understand how calories impact your ability to lose weight. The bottom line is that if you want to drop weight, you'll need to take in less calories than you expend. I've had obese friends that will spend hours at the gym but never lose weight because they're taking way more calories than they use on a daily basis. So how do you determine the number of calories you should be taking in? Well, there's a lot of tools online, like this one. Sites like these give you a good starting point to help understand how many calories you should be taking in every day in order to drop your body fat. In order to monitor calorie usage, you'll need to first set your goal and then keep track of what you are actually eating on a daily basis. You'll want to determine how many calories are in your food. Again, there's a plethora of tools online that will teach you how many calories are in typical food you eat. If you're not monitoring how many calories you're taking in on a daily basis, it's a lot like driving a car without a fuel gauge. I just use a simple spreadsheet that helps me determine my calorie intake on a daily basis, and without documenting this information, you'll allow yourself to begin cheating and eating little things here and there that over time will add a lot more calories to your daily intake. Monitor what you're actually eating on a daily basis. 
Here's a few other pointers for you. Get a good balance of fats, proteins, and complex carbs on a daily basis. While this may be a vague statement, I'll discuss this a little more at the end. You want to avoid foods with a high glycemic index. These are foods that dissolve and quickly go into your bloodstream. Sites like this can help you understand whether food you're eating has a high glycemic index or not. Eating foods with these high values leads to health issues like diabetes, as repeatedly consuming food that quickly dissolves into your bloodstream on a daily basis over time will damage your body. Regarding supplements, when we get into this discussion, again, there's a big industry out there that's trying to sell you on products. There's always the promise that you'll lose weight or be a better you if you just take their pills. This is mostly junk, to be honest. There's only three supplements I use on a daily basis that are very basic. The first two many use, which are multivitamins and fish oil. The other supplement I use is protein powder, which I use before I go to the gym. These items are relatively cheap to buy and they last a long time. Again, these aren't weight loss pills or testosterone pills or some kind of a gimmick. These are just simple items you can pick up at your local grocery store. Now, regarding physical fitness, this will be different for every person. Some people enjoy yoga, running, biking, swimming, and so on. If you're sitting at a desk all day, start out your morning with a cardio workout. Park in the furthest spot in your parking lot at work. Walk up the stairs at your job instead of taking the elevator. If you can jog, then go for it. I jogged every day for 20 years until I tore my meniscus in my knee a few years ago. It was something I enjoyed a great deal, but recently I found other ways to continue pushing myself. When it comes to physical fitness, you should Google HIIT Workout. H-I-I-T stands for High Intensity Interval Training. I personally don't enjoy being on the treadmill or elliptical machine for prolonged periods of time, and studies have shown that using the HIIT approach for cardio has a lot of advantages over steady state cardiovascular workouts. I'm not necessarily trying to sell you on this, but it's definitely worth your time to research and learn more. Without going on a tangent about different types of cardio workouts, the important thing for you to take away is that every little thing you can do to add steps in your daily life will help. I have a lot of friends that use Fitbit to help them monitor their daily physical activity, and it's helped them a great deal. As you begin to get up and move more throughout your day, you'll find your endurance will improve. Whereas you may be able to only walk a few blocks at the beginning, over time you'll find that by actually getting out and walking or jogging, it will make a big difference. The goal is to get up and move. Avoid the sedentary lifestyle, which can lead to an early death. Now, regarding strength training, there's a lot of information you can find online. Some of it can be confusing and overwhelming at first. I'll share with you at the end of this video the approach I'm using, and in the description section, I'll try to provide some additional resources you might find useful based on your level of experience and comfort. Resistance training is very important, and it is something you shouldn't overlook. We have many local gyms in our area that are about $10 to $20 a month, and I think that's a good investment. If you don't have that option, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that show how to use your own body weight for resistance training. Again, I'll provide some links in the description section below if you want to check them out later. And regarding rest, don't skimp on this either. It's easy to allow yourself to get caught up in this busy lifestyle and you often can neglect a good night's sleep. Sleep is free and it's so important. Most people deprive themselves of sleep and end up relying on caffeine and sugar to make it through the day. That's an expensive path to lead down, and it's one you can't afford. Get sleep. So, I'll share with you my own personal journey over the next 12 weeks. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I used to jog every day for years, and then a few years ago, I tore the meniscus in my left knee. While I still have full mobility, I can't handle high-impact movements on my knee anymore. It was a bit discouraging at first when I developed the injury, but I've had to learn to adapt to different ways of working out. I've admittedly gained some weight over the last several years, and while preparing for this video, uh, I've had to come to some difficult realities, namely that I need to drop about 20 pounds of body fat. Beyond just wanting to drop some weight in the coming months, my long-term goal is to make changes to my diet to ensure I can enjoy a long, healthy life. In the last several months, I've begun to make changes as I have recognized that some of my lifestyle choices are not healthy. For example, I used to sit more than 12 hours a day working behind my computer. Recently, I built a treadmill desk a few months ago and so I can get up and move and work at the same time. I found a cheap treadmill on Craigslist and tossed it under a desk I built from scrap plywood and 2x4s I had in my garage. It took some getting used to, but now it's much more comfortable. Also, a few months ago I cut alcohol out of my diet completely, and just in the last 4 weeks I've dropped 7 pounds without any other changes to my diet. A few days ago I also picked up a used elliptical workout machine from a friend of mine, which has low impact on my knee and allows me to get a good workout in the morning and evening. While purchasing this equipment set me back a little financially, the combined cost is lower than the amount I will spend on a case of 1,000 rounds of 5.56 ammo. I say that to hopefully put things in perspective when it comes to prepping. We'll buy gear and other things, but not invest in our own health. 
there's really no more important thing than your health. Without it, you're done. So here's what I'm gonna do in the next three or four months. I picked up a book on Amazon a few months ago called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, which I'll be using as my program for the next several months. I have two personal goals, to drop about 20 pounds and to increase my endurance. Beginning on the following Monday after I launch this video, I'm gonna start following the routine from the book. And why even use a routine from a book? Well, my personality is such that I love details and a clear plan, which the book offers for me. Also, I just set up an Instagram account recently for my channel, and I'll provide a link in the description below. If you wanna follow along with my personal progress, I'll post updates every week or two. I know we cover a lot in this video, but don't let it overwhelm you. I'm the type of person that likes to get all the facts and information in front of me, and then it helps me to make a plan of action to move forward. If you're wanting to make a change in your life and get physically fit, that's a decision you'll never regret. Find a way you can engage your body, start today, and don't let another day go by. I hope this video gives you a starting point to make this very important decision. As always, I love to get feedback from the community in the comments section as I learn so much from you guys. This is a subject matter that requires action and sacrifice. I'll keep you guys up to date on my own progress and I'll make a follow-up video in the future. As always, stay safe out there.